Good morning, y'all. It's Lippy. I'm busy this morning. I bet y'all busy, too. I'm not working on fried dill pickles just yet. Got me a fresh cup of coffee. And I was like, you know, Lippy, it don't always just have to be just a recipe. So I just wanted to turn the camera on and have y'all grab you a cup of coffee or whatever your morning drink of choice is and sit down and visit with me. Y'all curious to see what I'm doing, huh? <laughs> y'all, I tickle my own self sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. How am I going to do this? Oh, I have a rag here. It's got to go in the washer. All right. Yeah, I don't want to touch that little stick thing. Hang on. Let me show y'all what I'm working on. There you go. I'm working on breakfast sausage. When I find it on sale, I come home and I cut it up or slice it. Now I mash the patties out. And I put it on a lined cookie sheet. Now I'm going to have to put another layer here. I'll get them padded out for just a minute. Now, I, you can make them pretty by taking your thumb. Y'all, I don't have time to sit there. I'm just going to mash. All right. And let me show you what I do with them. Okay. I'm going to cover another sheet of press and seal. Y'all know I love that stuff. And then I'll put the rest on. I'm going to flash freeze these for about three hours. And I'm going to refill this one bag. So you see, I can pull out the amount of sausage patties that I need. Okay? That's the way to do it, y'all. This is so easy. There you go. And so if I'm not going to do uh, sausage patties, say for breakfast or whatever, I thaw them and I crumble them up and then I have ground sausage. Um, it allows me to control the amount. You know, a lot of times, you know, y'all buy, or I used two years ago, till I started flash freezing, I say, yeah, probably 30 years ago. And, uh, well, that stuff didn't want to tear. Anyway, um... And, you know, we would have our pound in the, the ice box and we'd cut off of it or we'd cut, cook the whole thing. And, and I was like, you know, it was just my daughter and I for a long time. And uh, I needed to stretch my food. I didn't want it running. And then I started flash freezing. And let me tell y'all what. It's, it's amazing, you know, to condense, put all of these patties in a bag like this after it's frozen, and then you just pull the amounts that you need, you know, whether you're, like I said, frying it or crumbling it, space saver, because this actually bag will hold four pounds, so that'd be four of those one pound things, and I don't know how many patties I got, let me see, three, six, nine, twelve, 15 patties. So I'll add that to these four. That gives me 19 patties. We don't eat them every day. So I'll get these in the freezer. I got to clean up. We're doing fried dill pickles. I promise you. But I also want to visit with y'all. You got to get you a cup of coffee while I'm going to put these in the freezer. I'm back, y'all. Now we're on the bacon. <laughs> You're thinking... When's the pickles coming? They coming. As you can see, I'm prepping. That's because I went to town today. I went to Walmart. And I stocked up my monthly run, but I grabbed extra. I had extra funds. Well, that's only because of you guys watching my videos. I got a check, y'all, the other day. I know. It's little compared to the big world, but it's it means something to me. It means y'all are watching and you're supporting this crazy life with Lippy, right? <laughs> so I went and bought more K 
canned goods, and we'll get into that. Quite a bit of bacon, quite a bit of breakfast sausage. Let's see what else. And that was it as far as the extras. That's what I got. But I'm putting my bacon up now. I just showed you one tray. Now I already had two trays done. So they gave me a total of three trays. So I had six pounds of sausage I actually bought. So it's flash freezing. Now I won't be flash freezing the bacon, but let me show you what I do with the bacon. Now this is just one pound packages. It was really pretty bacon. Let me show you. Um, it's just a thick cut, great value Walmart brand, but it's, it's actually very pretty bacon, okay? Here we go, I gotta touch that stick. But let me show you how I actually do my bacon. Some of you may do it like this, or it may be like, oh, that makes sense. So let me show you how I do my bacon. All right, let me unfold. I'll tell you what, I'll just do another one real quick. Hang on. Then you can see it from the beginning. I'll set that aside. Give me another little piece. All right. There's one, two. I always do four slices to a wrap. Reason why I do that is four slices we can fry. I can use it for beans. It's the perfect amount. If I need more bacon, I know I can pull out two packages. That gives me eight slices. So as you can see, I had it open. And all I did was fold it over. That's all I did. And I'm just gonna roll it up, tuck the ends, and then we're gonna see what two pounds does for us at four pieces per wrap, and that goes in a freezer bag. Now, some of you may do it like this, but I can get a lot of those wraps. And, uh, well, let me show y'all. Hold on a minute. Okay. Now here, I know that this is my bacon fat, like bacon ends. So I'll bundle it by six because they're thick and odd shaped. It goes in the freezer bag. And I'll reuse this freezer bag a couple of times for my bacon ends as well as for the bacon. And you just pull out what you need. Um, and it saves space in a freezer, y'all. Like I said, I've been doing this many, many years. Uh, once I showed Nanny Joyce, my mother-in-law, that's been, what, 23 years ago, about flash freezing. She flash freezes everything now, too. Now, you can't go leaving it for 24 hours and all this kind of stuff. You'll run your food. You want to get it to where it's just frozen maybe not even quite fully frozen, you know? And what that does is it keeps it from sticking together like the meat patties. So I'm gonna get these all done and get them just in a freezer bag, set into the freezer. We're getting ready for the, <laughs> for the pickles. Okay, this was five slices, okay? That's fine. I'm just gonna tuck it over and we ended up one, two, three, we ended up with six, five wraps. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. There you go. I'm gonna throw it in the freezer, pull it out when I need it. We don't eat bacon every day. We don't eat sausage every day. I kind of rotate bacon, sausage, breakfast, ham, no meat. It just really all depends. We don't try to consume an awful lot of meat, more vegetables than anything. So I gotta get this cleaned up. We're getting to the pickles, I promise. Now it's time to fry some pickles. Miss Josette, this one's just for you, honey. But I'm gonna show y'all, now, let me say, you can take a whole deal, slice it to the thickness that you want, but our favorite all-time pickle far beats mine that I can is Best Made. They're out of Texas, guys. It's Best Made, okay? And this has sea salt. These are amazing. 
These are just the hamburger slices. I happen to have them in the icebox. We're gonna use those. Now, I do have the large deals. That jar hasn't been opened yet. I don't normally keep multitude of jars like a deal. We'll finish this one because we eat them sliced, we eat them whole, or um, we'll pull out the sweet relish. I may have some sweet pickles at times, but I don't have an abundance of, of different pickles in the refrigerator. Um, I don't know, it's safe space, and to me, sometimes if you have too much, it gets shoved to the back, it goes bad. Well, what did you do? You lost some money. Well, at least that's, you know, in this house, it, it can happen. So I, I don't like to pull out a bunch. Now, if we had people over, most definitely I make a large pickle tray. I don't know of one person. No, there's not one person in our family that don't eat pickles. So we're lucky there. All right, I'm gonna get a sip. Now this, I'm just doing this in a small batch. The way I make mine, you can upsize it. Make as many as you want. You just add more flour, a little secret ingredient. Y'all get it. So I'm gonna drop you down. I'm gonna show you this is all I've done. So I pulled out just, just a few, put them on a plate on top of a paper towel, and I have been drying them. You need your pickles dry, okay? So while they are drying, I will leave this on there. We'll get the batter. Okay, we're ready. We're gonna fry up some pickles. Now, remember, I've had these sitting here a good 10 minutes drying. I wanted to make sure I got as much moisture out of these pickles as I, as I could get. Oh yeah, you can see. And I'm gonna set it up according to my station. Let me get some stuff out of the way. I know my hands are in the way, but I do need this over here. Okay, here's our dried pickles. Here's our dry jet, dredge. I've got a half a cup of just all-purpose flour. Now, you can add more to this. This is really just acting as a glue for our wet. So it's a half a cup of all-purpose flour, and I added about a tablespoon of yellow cornmeal. You can leave it out, but you're gonna miss the crispy, okay? And I'm just gonna mix these. Now, to the dry, I am gonna season with my swamp mix, which is a Cajun seasoning, about a teaspoon, because you're gonna see where the main seasoning is gonna go. And I'm just gonna put a pinch of garlic salt. Now you'll notice I'm not adding any pepper because I do have my swamp mix in here. Get that well and combined. Okay, we're gonna set that over to the side. Now the star of the show, because this is what really makes it. There's a half a cup of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of cornstarch, okay? I'm gonna add more Cajun seasoning, which is my swamp mix. And that was a heaping teaspoon, guys. Remember, I'm gonna fry some more this evening. We're gonna go in again with a little bit of garlic salt. Now this is where you could add some cayenne pepper, more salt, uh, you know, really whatever seasoning you like. This is plenty for us. I say that I need a little bit more. <laughs> I go by color. Now, like I said, this is to your palate. This was a half a cup of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of cornstarch. Now, this is club soda. I don't know how to measure this for you guys. I'm gonna go on looks and maybe we can figure it out together. I'm gonna start off with about, I don't know, a half a cup. I'll be able to tell by consistency. I'm gonna need more than that. This is gonna be the key. You want this very liquidy. Is that even a word? I hope y'all can see. 
Yeah, it's getting there. All right. Definitely more. But like I said, you know, if you wanted to, you could put this in the fridge two or three days and use off of it. Because you're noticing I'm not using an egg. That's where my cornstarch is coming in to replace the egg. That way I can put this in a sealed container, shake it up, and use it over the next couple of days. So if the grandkids come, I can whip them up some fried dill pickles. That's where I want it. Let me get it well and combined. You know, some people say don't overwork your cornstarch. Well, when you got the club soda, it doesn't cause it to get heavy. All right, let me see. You see, it's kind of runny, sort of. I don't know. Let me get up in the camera. Y'all see? There you go. I think you get the gist of it. So if I had to guesstimate, I might have used about a cup, seriously. About a cup. All right. Now, this does get messy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put my pickles. They're dry. Now, if they were wet, they would be clumping up in here. But because I dried them so well, I can just toss them in here. All right. Let's get this out the way. Come over here. I'll take my fork and my hand, and I want to give them a good coating. Okay? The batter's got to have something to stick to. There we go. Now we're gonna double dredge, okay? So, I'm gonna go in. This is where it gets messy. And I'm gonna set these to the side. I should have made a third bowl, but hey, I'm trying to save on dishes. Y'all get the gist of it. That looks like enough to start because you wanna coat them very well. And don't worry about them getting all sticky because they won't. Now, we're putting them over here, can you see? On this cookie sheet that I've got saran wrap on. Because we have got to allow for this flour and cornstarch and all of this goodie to mellow. Meaning if I was to put this in the oil right now it would bread up gummy, okay? Because we're actually gonna chill these. Now, if I was doing a party, I would do these the night before and I would flash freeze them. Then they are ready to go directly into the fryer. So if you got a bunch of pickles, go ahead and get a bunch made, flash freeze them, put them in a bag, you're good to go when you're ready for fried dill pickles. But like I said, it is a mess. You could use tongs. I could use this fork that I pulled out, but that's no fun, is it? All right, let me get these going. See how I'm doing this? Every bit's getting coated. I don't know about y'all, but I keep club soda around. I fry my chicken and I'll add club soda to a batter. I also do it with my boudin balls. Club soda is your friend. I think that bottle was like 79 cents, something like that. All right, we got four more. Let's get them in here. And like I said, this wet batter, I will put in a container and set it over into the fridge. Now I'm gonna set these in the freezer about 15 minutes. That gives me time to get my peanut oil heating up and clean my mess. But I'm not throwing this away, I'm putting it in a container, okay? But this does have to flash freeze about 15 minutes. Okay, I got my kitchen cleaned. I've got my batter put up in the refrigerator. And I want to sit and talk with y'all. Let me lower this down some. There we go. That's better. Y'all, 
my little, what's that little circle thing, that little halo light? Yeah, mine broke. So, y'all get a lamp today. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna get no Academy Award for Best Film or Emma. But <laughs> anyhow, I needed to talk to y'all on a serious note. Um, and, and I'm gonna use myself as, as the prime example, okay? Matter of fact, I'm gonna insert a photo right now. I've learned how to do that. You see those tomatoes? I was harvesting that amount daily. Of course, I was planting determinants. When you plant a determinate tomato, they come in all at one time. They stay stagnant, they stay more bushy. An indeterminate will keep producing, okay, much longer. And of course they get, you know, five, six feet tall. But the problem with indeterminates, and that's what I planted, all but one determinate tomato, and that was that uh, Hoss Tool Celebration. Um, I'm only getting two, three at a time, okay? I'm gonna stand up and grab a plate and show you this is five days of picking. And y'all y'all seen the tomatoes. Y'all know how many I have. Here you go. I took about five days. Two, let's see, one, two, three, yeah, about five days. Guys, I can't make salsa for the kids and for my husband. I don't eat a lot of tomato, salsa, and things like that. It tends to not like me. But that, I could, yeah, add, it, add them to the freezer. I would blanch them, put them in cold water, add them to the freezer. Keep building and building. But with the heat that we are having here in Louisiana, am I really gonna get enough? I can tell you, no, I'm not. Not if you look back at that one picture. That was in 20, see, we had a storm in 19 and 20, so that was in 2018. We lost our garden in 2019, and we lost our garden to a tornado and hailstorm in 2020. We just finished the last round of what I call Rotel and Salsa November or December of last year because I had put so much up because it's you I use it in multiple ways okay I don't make a sweet salsa just kind of a standard salsa so I can turn it into things but the rotel I love it because I mix it with meatloaf I make a spaghetti sauce I put it in my stews I use it chili there's just numerous ways that I can use it um, instead of just having spaghetti sauce uh, this sauce, that sauce. I like to do just a flat base, and then I can flavor it to whatever I'm, you know, wanting to flavor it with. Well, I've been going to the store and looking. I was at Walmart, well, let's see, today's the, going on the first, so it had been the first of June. Yeah, because I go like on the first of the month. And in the center of the aisle, They had green beans. Well, y'all know I didn't grow green beans this year. I don't have the room. I mean, we don't have the, the, the boxes ready. They were 50 cents a can. It's two for a dollar. And this is where I'm going with this. Ingredients, green beans, water, and salt. When you can green beans, what do you have in that jar? Green beans, water, and salt. Now, are these organic? No. Do we eat them? Yes. There again, the times we're in, you have to then decide. Do you want the $2 and something can? 
or you want the 50 cent can. So, you know, things go south and you're hungry. This will keep you alive. The times we're in, I don't think we need to be so picky. This is just lippy talking, okay? I don't think we need to be picky, but what we need to do is be prepared. I have no shame in going and buying four cases. Yes, I bought four cases. Today, I bought two more. 50 cents a can. Now, you only have the choice of the green beans. I hadn't figured out why the carrots and English peas, but it was just the green beans, regular or the um, French cut. And you could get whole kernel corn or cream style. I didn't get any corn because I've got probably 60 ears in the freezer and close to 34 quart size, excuse me, bags that I put up last year that we didn't go through. But also in November of last year, remember I told y'all I had bought some of these in Kentucky and just in case, cause we didn't know we were gonna have a garden. I didn't know if my farmer Lester Farms was going to have corn. We also bought corn. I bought two cases of whole kernel, two cases of cream style. The dates are good till next spring. So what I'm going to do is as I pull one of mine out of the freezer, the next corn I'm going to use will be off the shelf. So I'm going to rotate. But you see I have backup because I thought about it. Guys, this year has been a struggle. Take me out of it, okay? We didn't have that many boxes because it cost to put dirt in those boxes. But a lot of you, and I don't, I don't think Mr. Danny at Deep South is gonna mind me saying this because that's the first one that come to my mind because it's been so recent. The weather took his Danny corn out. If y'all haven't seen that video, it's heartbreaking. It's heavy on my heart because you see, he's just one. He's just one person. There's many out there that is facing this. It is so hot, it's like the Sahara Desert, right? And dry, just bitterly dry or you've got too much rain, or up on the East Coast, it's crazy, it's cold. I mean, 50 degrees and you'll jump to 70. Boop, back down into 60, oh, you might get 80. This, uh, this inconsistent weather pattern that is happening, your plants don't know if they need to go dormant, if they need to bloom, they don't know what they're supposed to do. So we have to ask ourselves. yes, we want to grow and we want to eat what we grow. We want to try to eat in season. But some of you may not have the property to do that. Some of you may not have the physical ability to do that. And then there's, a, there's some of you that have the physical ability, the property to do it, and the equipment and financing to do it. And you'll sit there and say, well, I'm only gonna eat what I grow. Well, what if your garden turns into Danny King corn? I pray that you have plenty stocked up from last year. I pray that you don't mind saying, hey, I'm gonna get me some great value green beans because things are looking really dark in this country. And I don't mean a, to be a Debbie Downer. I'm just being real. You're gonna choose to throw your shoulders up and say, hey, I'm gonna only eat what I'm growing and man, my garden is going just amazing. So was mine April 24th, 2020. I actually think I did a garden update video on that day. But that night, Weather had a different tune to sing, and we lost it. But I had some green beans in a can in my pantry. 
Because you see, I don't just garden and can and put up. I also think of finances. I know myself, I could go down and buy a couple of bushels of green beans. Would cost me three times what these cost me. Three times. So what do I have in these? Say, let's just go a case. There's 12 in a case at 50 cents a can, that's six bucks. I bought four. I got $24 in this. But I have what, 48 cans. We don't eat them every day. We eat them once every 10, 12 days because I constantly rotate different vegetables. We like to eat fresh in the summer, a lot of salads, light stuff. So this is more fall and winter, okay? Well, guess what? With those and the two that I got in November, I'm good for a year. The expiration date's good. It was $24. Guys, you gotta sometimes think about putting the pen to the paper. Math-wise. Now, you can't put your labor in this. Don't ever count your labor in anything. When you garden and you preserve, that's a labor of love. That's free. I can't stand it when people say, well, you know, I've got five hours into this. It's supposed to be a labor of love. So you don't calculate that. That's a lawn yob. That's free. But let's get back to the tomatoes. Okay. Y'all remember that picture? I was getting that daily. Well, life was good. I was putting up all kinds of tomatoes. This is a one pound can, okay? You can't find number 10 cans. But this one pound can was 78 cents. 78 cents. Now, I'm gonna read the ingredients. Tomatoes tomato juice, sea salt, calcium chloride, and citric acid. That's no different other than the calcium chloride that I would do to my tomatoes. And a lot of you may know this, some may not. Calcium chloride is nothing more than compared to um, your little sprinkles you put in your pick, pickles to keep them crisp. That's what it is. All it does is keep the, the tomato firmer so it don't mush in a can. That's all it is. It's a stabilizer to keep your fruit, your vegetables from getting mushy. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna hurt you at all. Do you think I could go down and afford to buy fresh tomatoes? The amount that I need? No way. And if I had the money and I did a comparison of fresh tomatoes, bushels of them, to this, it'll cost me three times to go get bushel right now. Cause I didn't, y'all saw what I'm growing. Two and three a day. Now, they're gorgeous tomatoes. Don't get me wrong. But right now, the way this heat is, it could dry them up and cook them on the vine. So, Lippy is making her salsa and her rotel this year to great value. That's a one pound can. Now, how many of these about? 20. I got less than $20 in it. If you wanna add tax, let's round it up a dollar can, you know, depending on where you're at for tax. So I got $20 in that. That will make me enough salsa. It's gonna make me enough rotel to add to what I have, cause I still have a lot of these, only in the, um, what are those 16 ounce cans? The, I don't remember, the standard cans. I'm looking in my pantry, I probably have 15 or 20 of those. I'll cook with those. These that I bought is what I'm fixing to put my salsa up with and my rotel. Now I've got plenty of bells, plenty of onions in the freezer from last year. 
and I've been adding this year as I get one. The onions, let me show you where my onions are. About 40 pounds. About, I don't know, about a month ago. Yeah, it's been a month ago. I chopped them all up. I have a couple of gallon bags of chopped, a couple of gallon bags of julienne, and I got about 15 of these sitting in my onion bin because I use fresh onions. So all I needed was tomatoes. Well, here's my tomatoes. You don't have to make salsa. You don't have to make rotel. Check your expiration date. If you have a big family, here you go. It's less than a dollar. All I'm saying is I want to encourage, don't hold your head down. If you lean to great value, Del Monte, whatever, it's food at the end of the day. You're doing what you can do at that moment, that place and time in our lives right now. And I hold my head up proud. One, I didn't have to grow it. I didn't have to pick it. I didn't have to can it. And it's got everything in it for 50 cents. It's just, you know, looking at the budget, looking at what's facing us. Now, if you have it, I praise you. If your garden is just blowing up, I'm proud for you. If you have the finances to go and purchase from a farmer, I'm proud. But we also have to be proud of the average person too. We're all striving to do one thing and that's preserve and feed our family. I'm not giving a car payment up. Well, I don't have one. Let's use something. I'm not gonna give, um, I don't know, a light bill up and catch up on the next month just so I can go buy $100, $200 worth of seeds or, I don't know, go down to the farmer's market and spend it up. But now I gotta play catch up on my light bill. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna buy me some great value green beans. I'm gonna buy me some whole peeled tomatoes. I got whole peeled, I got petite diced and regular diced. I mixed it all up. Just don't buy a dented can. Mm -mm. And that's what I'm trying to say, guys. I get a lot of emails. There's some good friends of mine that have YouTube channels. Matter of fact, I talked to one last night. We were talking about canning, okay? But they have the same mindset as I. They also buy like I. Because we're not putting our eggs all in one basket. But like I said, I'm sure Mr. Danny doesn't mind me using his Danny corn as an example. But y'all, I had to turn the I had to turn my phone off. Now, I did know prior to the video. But it didn't it just didn't connect. I mean it was there, but it didn't get but when I saw it, it's just one. So whatever's happening. However you analyze it in your mind, whatever you suspect is going on, it's happening, okay? The cookie has crumbled. Get food now. Don't just depend on your garden if you don't have a large enough garden. Remember how many days there is in a year. How many heads are you feeding in your household? And most definitely by what you will eat. Not just because someone said, I eat this. Never be a follower. Always be the leader 
of your own place. Be a leader of your own conviction. And by all means, always give grace. When I was able to check out, my debit card went in and come out because of you guys. I gave grace. There's not a day that don't go by that Libby don't give grace. So, I need to be quiet, get these pickles out. Miss Josette's waiting on them. I'm kind of waiting on them too. So, I love y'all, but I needed to sit down and just really talk because it's been heavy on my heart. So here you go. Let's get to cooking. Okay, oops. We're sitting about 360. Now I'm gonna show you, if you do not have a thermometer, you take this toothpick. And as soon as you set that toothpick in, it should start frying. Can y'all see that? That means you're around 350 degrees. So we're where we need to be. I do have a screen that I will be using. Now remember, there's no egg on this. Pickles are cooked, okay? So basically, all you're doing is cooking the breading. I hope you can see for the screen. I'll lift it up once it gets to frying. Can y'all see? I do this for splatter purposes. But remember, I'm only doing some samples. Now these set in the freezer about 15 minutes. Well, however long it was that I was talking to y'all, that's how long they set. Okay, I'm gonna throw that on there. I'm not gonna let you miss nothing. Now it's only gonna take a couple of minutes. Now, I'm not gonna stir them. I'm just gonna go down the side. Yep, they're separated. And all I did was just lightly push to make sure that they were separated. I'm sitting on right at a high. Okay, now that I know that they're frying pretty crispy, I can take and just kind of roll them around very gently. There we go. And they'll flip over. All right, I think I got them all flipped. A few more minutes and we're there. They're nice and golden brown, just like I like them. So we're gonna plate them up. Now, if you were gonna be serving these, I would actually recommend to put them on a rack, a cookie rack, and let them drain from there onto paper towels. Um, what that's going to do, that's going to ensure the crispiness as you get ready to serve them. But since it's just me, I'm going to dry them on a paper towel. There you have it. Fried dill pickles. Now, you can serve it with your special sauce. This is just simple ranch dressing. Look at that. Let's go in for a closer look. See that little bit of cornmeal flake? Remember I told you about a tablespoon. It just adds that depth of crisp. Okay, it's sample time. I got my water. I was trying to let them cool off some, but I'm just gonna grab one. Let's see, where's the, I know what I can do. Y'all listen. Did you hear that? What? It's that crisp, right? Now, you don't have to fry them as hard as I did. But I mean, they're golden. And that's what you want. Because you got a crisp on the outside. Oh my. Now, let me tell you. You can do pickled okra like this. Stupid good. Spicy pickles. Oh my word. Or just a regular dill pickle. 
use what you have in your fridge. And like I said, those were there. That was the replacement jar. I didn't want to open another one. But when we do open the pickled okra, it's gonna be on. If you never had fried pickled okra, you don't know what you're missing. So there you go, Miss Josette. I hope I did justice, guys. And I hope a lot of you will agree with our little sit down conversation. Let's help each other, you know? So I hope I gave you maybe some thought. Shop around. If you're walking out and seeing your garden just crisp up, it's okay. It's okay to walk into Walmart or your local grocery because we all gotta eat and we all have to praise each other no matter where our food's coming from as long as we're eating and we give grace. So, I'm gonna sit down with my water and my lunch, almost made too much. Ain't none gonna go to waste. Till next time, stay safe, stay well. Mm. Shut the front door and God bless. I love you, Josette.